Well, certainly a number of the stores have changed in that period of time uh, in the downtown business district. But uh, I think the town has just grown in enthusiasm for volunteers and things of that sort. Many organizations have started up and um, they all seem to grow and prosper. Well, certainly the educational system, but also the people who live here. And I think there are more volunteers in this community than any other community I can imagine. Uh, you don't have to um, search for volunteers. They're not exactly breaking down the door, but people like to get involved here. And I think that parental support is what really makes our school system so good. I was on the Recreation Council and a young man came in and said he was new in town and he wanted to know if he could start a soccer league. Well, the, rec the um, council said, sure, go ahead. But they sort of left him on his own. So what I did, I took him out that night after the meeting and I showed him the different fields that were available. And the two of us started the soccer league together. Uh, we really didn't have any forms or anything to follow. So we took the little league application I can remember whiting out where it said Haddonfield Little League and writing in Haddonfield Soccer League. And we didn't have any money for equipment, but there was a recreation program during the summer. So we publicized the fact that we would um, have a soccer training program during the summer, and it was $10 to register. And with that $10 registration fee, we got um, balls and nets, and a lot of people came out and helped coach. Haddonfield 65 Club is a group of retired men or over 65 years of age, and we meet once a week. We have guest speakers every Thursday at 1.30. A variety of topics from health to um, financial issues to entertaining issues. So we really have a wide selection. We have um, trips to the casinos and different places. Um, we have uh, a spring luncheon where the wives are invited. We have a fall luncheon. And it's just a good group of guys. They play bridge, they play pinochle, they go out golfing, and Friday mornings I go bowling. Uh, with the Indian King Tavern, I started the town criers. We uh, thought the idea would be a good idea to have announcements made by a town crier for events at the Indian King Tavern. And we opened the auditions up and we publicized it in the paper. And we got quite a few responses, and one of them was from a father who said, would you consider a child? Yeah, why not? Didn't think he'd have a chance, to be honest. But when the young man came in and he sat down and somebody very casually asked him, do you know whose picture that is on the wall? And he says, yes, that's Governor Livingston. He was the first governor of the state of New Jersey. One of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, and he went on to rattle off two other names so he was really well versed on history and he did a very, very nice presentation. So I said, we have to keep him. And we decided that the others were so competitively and so close, we kept five, including Joey, Joey Ryle. I would say Elizabeth, Elizabeth Haddon's dream of it becoming a real community definitely has been achieved. Uh, it's one of the few towns, and matter of fact, the only town I can think of that was named after a woman, but actually I think it was named after her father, but we'll buy that. <laughs> and, um, you know, we had a very good uh, mayor, female governor, a uh, female mayor, and that's one of the things I mentioned to the kids that come here from Japan, that we named after a woman and a female mayor. So um, the community is great, and I think it's uh, lived up to Elizabeth Adams expectations. Well, I just hope that the town stays the size it is, plus or minus a few here and there. Uh, I hope there are no mergers with uh, communities in the surrounding area. I like the isolationist bit. And um, it's almost like a feudal castle uh, living in Haddonfield. And uh, I worked in real estate and it's amazing. People come in from different areas driving through and they come to Haddonfield and they said, this is like an oasis. And it's true. 
I hope uh, at some point funding from the state would increase for the uh, schools because the real estate properties are terrible. Uh, I pay as much, almost as much yearly now as I paid for my house 45 years ago. That's hard to imagine, but it's true. The reason we moved to Haddonfield, I was working at RCA and living in Philadelphia and driving back and forth over the bridge every day, we decided to move to Jersey. We did look at a few surrounding communities and we never looked at Haddonfield because we got, had the illusion that Haddonfield was a very expensive town to live in. And I guess it is true. But um, when I worked at RCA, they had two weeks off during the summer. They didn't have multiple listing service with the real estate commission or the real estate uh, sales offices. Each office was independent. And we had never approached Haddonfield. And uh, for two weeks we looked and we couldn't find anything. And it was on a Sunday and we were ready to go back to work Monday. And my wife happened to see an ad in the paper for a home and it said uh, gazebo in the backyard, grape arbors. And I made wine, so that sort of caught my attention. And uh, my wife said, can we go look at it? And I said, all right, this is the last house though. And as soon as we walked in, we knew we liked it. I've used the term in real estate before, but I call it an, an elbow nudger. We walked in, we went, yeah. 